Is our boy Athlean X dead wrong again? Will we be able to power clean and push press more than a 64 kilo woman? That and more on this episode of The Lift Companion. Play, play the music. Okay. Honestly, in this case of Laura Donatelma, she is vastly stronger than like the vast majority of men. Oh, I guess we should start getting warm up. Huh? Yeah, I mean, you don't need to do too much warming up for power clean push press, but I will. Yeah, it's kind of a brute force movement, huh? Yeah, it's just grip and rip and then throw it. Really advanced stuff. I'm gonna put knee sleeves on. I'm gonna go knee sleeves and flats, which is very weird. I will speak to the people that have tight rack positions real quick after I tie my pants. If you don't tie your pants before you work out, then it's kind of odd. You ever feel like when you grab the bar and your butt crack starts hanging out that it disrupts your focus? Yeah. There's a roly poly. Come here, young man. I don't want anything bad to happen to you today. That's, uh, that's Steven. Oh. There's coyotes in this neighborhood. Hell yeah. All right. So if you have a f***ed up rack position, chances are you just whip out a foam roller, start blowing up your lats, stretching your wrists, doing everything you can to open it up. But what you should be doing is doing some for your thoracic spine. Literally a cheat code for that is just to do SOTS press in the bottom, clean grip and just do like four sets of eight on these. It doesn't matter if literally the bar's ending up like out here. Just keep trying to get an extra millimeter of range on every press and you're gonna feel that light up your thoracic spine. Then magically, your elbows are gonna start getting higher and higher in that rack position. Chances are if you're tight there, your lats and all that stuff, they could be fucked up, but they're probably fine. Chances are it's something that's going on in your thoracic spine. A little scale for that is just find a box. Yeah, if you're real tight and you can't do those at all on the bottom, that's the ne next best thing. Try to lean forward a little bit while you do them too to kind of recreate that squat position. And then try to move off the bottom. A little bit harder in flats, I'll tell you. Way harder. Oh, you want to start with the uh, 20s? Yeah. Athlean X video, like it was clickbaity, obviously. Yeah. And like the definition ideal is, is interesting. Like that's also a subjective term. What's ideal for some may not be ideal for others. Yeah, circumstances are always different. Yeah, and I, I think like, look, he didn't really go, so many different like positions can be argued with different specific things like he, he was saying like okay athletes there's like some myth that athletes should be around 50 15 percent and anything lower than that may hinder your performance obviously there's a boatload of factors that can yeah. work into that like like genetics like your genetics could allow you to have you know sub 10 percent body fat which he pointed out yeah um and and another thing too like he said what what are your goals if your goals are to look lean like obviously lean out get your body fat lower but like if your goals are to perform well you shouldn't look at body fat percentage until you think it may be a hindrance um and i think where you and i kind of broke when we were watching this was when he started talking about strength training yeah um and he, he mentioned the whatever the other guy's name is and i, I mean we just laughed because 
they were like displaying a 400 pound squat as like ideal good strength yeah i think look which let's, is it's let's give him the benefit of the doubt he probably improved his strength at a lean body weight okay yes. that was his that was his thing but i would like to see somebody have the same conversation having been absolutely beat down by strength training not yes. just getting stronger and having a good time like Dylan and myself have been absolutely mercilessly beaten down by strength training. Yeah. And that gave me a 510 pound back squat and a 660 pound deadlift. It gave Dylan a 600 pound de uh, back squat and a near 660 pound deadlift, right? Like at that point, there's no body fat discussion. I'm not trying to be lean or anything. Yeah. Like I'm just trying to do healthy and whatever my body or my physique is at, it's at. Yeah. One thing that they did point at was like they talked about Michael Chandler and they mentioned being at a very lean body weight doesn't hinder performance for these guys. But I guarantee you they're talking about them when they cut. That was all the videos they showed was yeah. them like in a fight after they went through a cut. Their performance is definitely hindered when they're that lean. Yeah. They don't train that lean. They're that lean for three days. Yeah, like the, the weight the weight class thing, like that's not a good argument, right? Yeah, like, it's, like they, of dude, course they're going to be lean. They're f***ing cutting 20, 25 pounds. See, that's one of those things, like, that's why it was so, like, it's so much easier for a guy like to Khabib, for, like, a guy like Khabib to quit. Yeah. Or not quit, retire yeah. on top. Because the f***ing weight cut, dude. I heard he had, like, legendary weight cuts. Yeah, he would cut from, like, 185, 190 and shit. Yeah. Like, discuss, like. That's why he pulled out of the Ferguson fight, right? He literally well, just... Well, no, Ferguson was injured. Was right? he? Yeah, Ferguson got injured. Oh. There was like a huge debacle around Oh, him. yeah. Well, I know he's pulled out of fights before because of his cut. Those guys, guarantee you, they train probably around 10% body fat when they're training hard. I mean, Michael Chandler's like 5'5", five, five, and he probably trains 175, 180. Like, chances are he's not that and also 6% body fat. Do you know how freaky you would look if you were 5'5", 180, 6% body fat? Yeah, yeah. Like. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but he, he doesn't fight at 180. No. no that, oh, that's oh, what I'm oh, saying. Oh, oh, yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. I got, I got what you're saying. When they're actually yeah. performing at their best, they're probably around 10 to 12% body fat. That's what I'm saying. Just so we're clear, guys, I did the CrossFit workout today. <laughs> Just, Just so, so we're clear. So, so dumb when I did that. Whoop up. It's fun lifting out here because every time the driveway is a different shape. Yeah, it mixes things up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Should really get some slam pads. But I, I would, like, the, the main, like, the thesis being this, guys, like, you're not really in the strength and performance world until you, like, are really in it. Yeah. It's one thing to go to the gym and just be like, I'm focusing on strength now. And it's another thing to be like, I'm doing every... Thing I can for these next kilos. Yeah, if you're able to go an hour without stressing about your recovery, then you're not all the way in it. Like when I was training my hardest, every 10 minutes I was like, what could I be doing right now to make the outcome of my training better? And if like you have those bouts of time where you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah, when you're when you're when you're like training your hardest, the only thing you care about like every hour yeah. on the hour is strength training. Like look at the difference in dozer weightlifting and all that stuff compared now compared to when I was prepping for AO. Cuz I was actually in prep. So like literally had no energy to put into the business at all. Right. There was no growth, the content sucked. I was getting like 5,000 views of reel. I wasn't focusing on it at all. I was literally coaching my remote athletes and that's it. Yeah. Like if you're able to train really hard and also pour tons of energy into stuff outside of that, then you're missing out somewhere. You're, there's just no way to balance that stuff. One thing I will say, I don't know where I found, I had, there was a study some, somewhere and maybe Alex will be able to pull it up or something, but it showed that having a camera on you made you perform better. Interesting. Uh, and they were able to, to do this with like some group. I hope I'm not making this up and I remember it correctly. But one thing I like, I definitely gained that advantage uh, when training. 
I want the lift to look as good as I can. Yeah. Or I want to finish the workout that I said I was going to do because I set out to do it. So I did those the three bars of death workout. Yeah. That so like that I started it. And by the time I got to the round of 8 8 and 8, I was like, "Man, I'm ready to quit. Like I don't want to do this." Yeah. And I had the camera already rolling. I already set it up. I did some videos beforehand saying I'm going to the gym to do this really hard workout. And so I'm like, it. you know what? I'm going to finish it. And it was cool because I was able to feed off of that energy that almost doesn't exist because there's the audience isn't there. It's just me and the camera. Yeah. But I'm like portraying it as such. Yeah. You know, it's going to be seen by a bunch of people at one point. So yeah. you're like, I got to kind of show out. It's definitely a little hack. Like it's a it's a minor form of like competition that's why i always encourage my athletes to like post your training and stuff like that get an yeah. online training partner yeah Oof. Oof. i'm not gonna do any more re-racks the center neural's crushing me yeah Ouchie, wow. i want to see someone push through a intense adaptation phase in Olympic weightlifting at 6% body fat and just monitor what happens to them. They're required to stay at 6% and they have to go through like a rough volume phase, like week four of an accumulation cycle. Yeah. It would be brutal. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that Athlean X kept talking about too, was like people using it as an excuse, like higher body fat percentage as an excuse, like or, or using using performance as an excuse to not be leaner when it would be. Yeah. It's like, well, that's that happens. And I think um, I've actually dealt with it with some athletes too. I've dealt with it myself, dude. You know, I, I, like my whole weightlifting career has just been all about gaining weight. Yeah. Weight gain. Yep. And a lot of that sloppy bullshit that you don't need. So in that instance, like maybe he's correct, but I also think like, I don't know not many people watching are like really into strength training but that's just maybe 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 me you know i'm not i'm not again i'm not like trying to come from this high higher ground position but like it it is a weird weird world when you really try to edge out kilo after kilo after kilo and like come into the gym feeling like really messed up from the days before and then yeah. training through that that's a very difficult thing, and I, I don't know many people that do that, like, just casually. You know? Well, when you get deep enough into training, health and performance start to combat each other a little bit. Oh, yeah. And, like, you can't... Why... Brian Shaw didn't weigh 200 kilos because he thought it was healthy. He did that to be the world's strongest right. man. Lasha didn't weigh 180 kilos because he thought it was healthy. Like, that man gave himself heart issues, and if you think Lasha's ever going to total 500, you're crazy. Yeah, I think I... That's a far gone thing. It's not going to happen. But when you get to that level, you have to start making some sacrifice. And like with weightlifting, that could be body weight, like joint health, stuff like that. Stay over here, Bart. No, 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 no. That like me and I was on the CNK podcast and we talked about like adapting to training and like actually training hard. And we are talking about the whole like listen to your body thing. Like that's important. Like I feel like unless you, if you don't ever take yourself into deep waters where you're like, I shouldn't train today, but you still train. If you never get to that point, you're never going to adapt. Nothing's ever going to change. If you're like, oh, I should take a rest day today because I'm beat the fuck up and you take that rest day, the body's going to be like, oh, we're going to rest every time this happens. We don't need to change at all. Yeah. Like you have to be able to get to that point where you're like, fuck, I'm broken and keep pushing through that. Otherwise... You're not going to adapt. You're not going to change. You're not going to get stronger. See, weightlifting is this perfect balance between being calculated and a savage. And a savage. And uh, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of experience to know when to be a savage. Um, but it definitely you can be calculated and improve for a long, long time. Yeah. But then if you don't go out and do something that maybe you're not prepared for. Yeah. Like, I always talk about this. The magic of the unknown is, like, something that weightlifters really struggle to get after. And that's something that, like, the CrossFitters buy into too much. Yeah. It's their... This is what we're looking at. The weightlifting here and the CrossFitters here. Yeah. Weightlifters need more of the CrossFit mentality. CrossFitters need more of the weightlifting mentality. Yeah. 
And I think like Matt Fraser was really like the first dude to document that on such a high level. His, you know, he, he was taking things. Chris told me that Matt Fraser memorized an entire textbook where if he had to memorize three chapters, not just memorize it, but literally every sentence, like he yeah. would memorize a script. And if he messed up, he would go back to the beginning and memorize it again. Yeah, it's... That's the level of calculation that we're dealing with. Yeah. Like Rich Froning put hours and hours and hours and hours every day. Like he was the first CrossFitter to like at least explain that he was doing five, six, seven workouts a day. Yeah. Matt was the first one to take it and be like, okay, let me like take every little minute detail. Yeah. And fucking boil that down to my training. Yeah. And I just, it's like the, 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 use the energy, use the, the place, whatever it may be. When I did my 660 deadlift, yeah. my best from then, before then was 620. Yeah. I threw 660 on because I was in the gym with Nick Bear, uh, Adam Clink, yeah. and the music was loud. I'm like, fuck it, let's just go. Yeah. I didn't, I, it wasn't like a scheduled no. thing. It wasn't, you know, you just got to use it. The best outcomes come from calculated chaos. Whoa. Wow. Hey. I don't know if I have that in me right now. Went to the doctor, said there was nothing they could do. I'm just too f sick. Yeah, dude. You, you didn't know I'm a CrossFitter now? Yeah, dude. You're going to end up at the games if you keep f around like this. I know, bro. Watch out. What's his name, mullet guy? Huh? That's the good CrossFitter that wins all the time. Medeiros? Yeah. I've been basically calling him every night in the middle of the night being like, watching him. And he's like, who the f*** is this? <laughs> Actually, he doesn't swear. He's like one of those religious Who guys. the freak is this? Yeah, who's the fr who the frick is this? And I go, I'm watching you. 2023, Madison, Wisconsin. Over for you. It's over, dude. You don't even know me. I know you. I got six muscle ups today. <laughs> six. Yep. Twenty for the boys. One twenty for the boys. Who's with me? Who's with me, boys? Come on now. Spoon man. All right, I think this is what Lord Onatoma did. So this is a must. Yeah, you gotta do. She this. push pressed one twenty. Yeah. Clean power clean push press. The f yeah. Pretty sure. I mean, I, I don't know. It could be twenty five, dude. I don't even. Oh, man. oh, I'm gonna do 27 yeah. today, just in case. Yeah, you better. What the f dude? Tag Toma in the comments on every video until she gets on a lift companion with us. That'd be the best one. She wouldn't even talk, it would be so sick. Pretty easy, Toma. Pretty easy, you 64 kilo woman. Yeah. Oh, wow. Pretty darn easy, Toma. Hey, Lordana, I know a guy in, in Romania. He's not doing too hot. <laughs> this is to beat a girl that weighs 80 pounds less than me. 70, 70 pounds less than me. Oh, how about that? What do you say to that, Lord Donna? I'm out here feeling good about myself for power claim push pressing more than a 64 kilo woman. It's all right, women are just as strong as men. Honestly, in this case of Lord Donna Telma, she is vastly stronger than like the vast majority of men. If she competed at 61, 
transitioned to a man, came to America, got a citizenship, went to Nationals as a 61, which she win. Whoa. She's like a, she's I like the way she lifts because like the whole time she's lifting, it like sounds like she's in pain. She's just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everyone's trying to lift beautiful and shit. And Toma just like gets set and fucking rips. Yeah. What you see a lot with very flexible women is they can send their knees really far forward and sit really vertically. Yeah. And when doing so, they catch kind of like this. Yeah. And that because they're just so flexible, they can do that. Toma is all the way through, dude. Her head is all the way through and her butt is back. And, and she's, yeah. you know, like she gets sick. Like yeah, she's her pitted. Hips, yeah, she's pitted properly though. Yeah. You know, and that's like. I think the thing she does best is the way she assigns tension in her pull. Yeah. Like there's, her back almost looks round, but I think I that is it. I love ideal. It. Yeah. Like if you can, yeah. when you're hyper extended and you got this big lordotic tilt and your yeah. back's really arched, your glutes anything. aren't doing shit. You're not doing anything. Yeah, your hamstrings aren't doing shit. You're just all like adductors. All right, here we go. Heave that Yeah. <laughs> How about that? How about them apples? <laughs> How about that one? All right, that's gonna be the video, guys. Love you, Toma. Okay.